What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quarter, and she's back. She is back to promote herself, obviously. And also, an interesting little article came out on the passing of Alec Hawaka that has received absolutely no mainstream coverage. Shocking, I'm sure. All I can ask is that you, as a viewer, do me a huge solid by leaving a like on this video, a comment, and considering sharing it. It helps bring new people into the channel and helps defeat the obvious suppression that is going on on YouTube for independent creators. Now, a few days ago, somebody had sent me a bit of a Twitter meltdown, some people might say, and I meant to cover it. I, I really did. It's been sitting here archived since April 11th, probably April 12th on Sunday. I meant to cover it on Monday, but I had so much news on Monday even on today, I have videos that I'm going to have to publish at inopportune times because they're just getting old. They're getting stale. Uh, I've got a video I recorded about uh, some YouTube bologna sausage uh, like a week ago, and I still haven't published it. So that's coming out today. This is coming out today. I've got videos on Hollywood. I've got videos on Microsoft commerce. So much. So always make sure you check the main channel now. Leave it to Zoe Quinn to pop out of obscurity and make a worldwide phenomenon documentary about themselves. The thread reads, of course, seeing people react to Tiger King by fawning all over Joe Exotic and hollering about how Carol Baskins definitely fed her husband to tigers makes me deeply uncomfortable with the doc. As someone who's had a rogues gallery of messed up dudes trying to get me deleted for years. What? Are you comparing yourself to Carol Baskins? I think it would be fair to say that Zoe was the mother Teresa of grifters. You're not Carol Baskins. All right. You're a grifter. You stole money for a video game that you never delivered, and you've maintained victim bucks as your primary source of income for the past 15 years. I digress. I'm not here to cape for anyone, except for yourself, involved, and I don't care. But... The doc barely focused on the actual issues and cruelty occurring in favor of making Joe and company an amusing spectacle to the degree where the horrible stuff he did barely seems to matter to viewers. Oh no, it matters. It absolutely matters. I mean, I 100% support um, exactly where he's at right now. Justice was served. Uh, that doesn't mean we can't laugh uh, at the absurdity of the whole situation. Literally, the whole documentary is a, a, an unending series of what? Wait, what? Wait, 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 what? It's kind of like reading your Twitter. Damn! Then it spends an inordinate amount of time trying to sensationalize Carol as suspicious in her husband's disappearance when, quote, millionaire who collects tigers and likes to fly airplanes seems like the most likely person in existence to vanish. But since a bunch of bad dudes who openly admit they hate Wamen and her, I, I don't think Joe Exotic... Are you saying because he's, because he's gay that he hates women? Not very woke, Zoe. How dare you? I don't think any of those men on that show said they hate women. Um, they clearly dislike Carol Baskins, and in my opinion, she did feed her husband to the tigers. But I guess we'll never know, will we? And multiple times that have that she goes on to say that they have a grudge against her and say she must have done it. It as well as the guy's ex-wife and sister who didn't get more money in the will said she did it. Must be worth investigating. But the memes are all about how she did it. Joe is a kooky guy and not an animal bad guy. And my butt is sitting here thinking, wow, a lot of this sure does feel familiar. <laughs> oh, this is the first time I've read through this. I always say I try to hold back reading any articles or anything so my reactions are pure. And this is just as crazy and unhinged as I would have expected. While sympathizing with... The Iggy Pop looking guy who said, I just feel horrible for the Tigers. Again, I'm not here to defend anyone in the doc. No, 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 no. You're, you're here to use it for your own clout. But darn, the public reaction makes me glad no one made a documentary about any of the attention-seeking clown shoe guys who made up conspiracies about me and wanted to get me ended. Who are you kidding? Who are you kidding? Zoe, we all know 
You would love to have a documentary made about you. You wrote a book about it. Are you kidding me? Do you think everybody is stupid? Uh, also, if you want a wild documentary with people you can actually root for, check out Paradise Lost, blah, 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 blah. It fascinates me how little time they spend on the two guys who were pretty obviously being bad with teens in comparison to everything else. No big deal. Let's try to make it shady that a nonprofit has paid volunteers, has unpaid volunteer and says they were all garbage. That's why the documentary was so great. Everybody was garbage. Carol Baskins was garbage. Joe Exotic was garbage. The guy with the with the all the young wives, he's garbage. Everybody was garbage. Except for some of the people who actually love the animals, including the one person who had their arm bitten off and wanted to get, just cut it off and get on with it as to avoid any bad press. You see articles like this. How the F do you sit through seven episodes of men running animal bad behavior and weird hookup groups and come out most angry at the woman survivor that possibly got rid of her creepy predator husband she met at the site? Wait, possibly? So you, wait, what? So you agree that Carol Baskins probably did this. And let's be clear, the guy had a big pile of money and she was young. Hmm, I wonder, could there be a possible reason for why she married him? I guess the world will never know. The misogyny apparent in the big cat community, the documentarian, the viewers, is absolutely disgusting. I shouldn't be surprised, but I'm honestly, I am livid! <laughs> what world do these people live in? And then you see reactions like this. This tweet coming from a woman who actively pushed Al Kawaka to self-deletion after he exposed her bad behavior. Zoe Quinn is, not my opinion, this is what it says, actively trash. Shared DMs from Alec showcase sociopathic behavior while dating. Zoe got, uh, Zoe lost the right to feel comfortable at the moment she pushed Alec to his end. You can see these DMs. You can see another time we went out, he talks about all the just the terrible, look, they're probably both bad people. I mean, you could see out, you know, these DMs here saying right off the bat, I was, so I was in love with her and so happy to get with the relationship. I suggested we go to couples counseling as like, hey, this is really gay. great. Let's keep it that way by having a neutral third party to talk stuff about. I offered to pay for it and whatever because I knew she was broke. Her response to that was, well, if you think you need that, and I was like, no, no, this would be for both of us to talk about whatever's going on. She said, well, if you think you need that, and then you can see Al coming here and saying, can't wait for pathological, pathological liar quest. That's a, a reference to Zoe's game. Then Alex eventually says, I got game over pretty early, but from what I hear, the games get even worse if you keep playing. So and he's exposing her for just being a garbage human in her, in his opinion. Another time we went out to this Yuri's night thing, she just got hammered and was hitting on all kinds of people. It was super new to me. Like people I was in a relationship with being super flirty with other people. I was trying not to be judgmental. She kept going to the bathroom and saying a girl there was hitting on her. And after like three or four times, I was like, you want to just go make out with her? Because if you really want to, go for it. And then she did this whole, no, I only want to be with you, blah, blah. And that kept going back to the bathroom. Later, she had a huge breakdown about how everyone hits on her and it's so unfair and evil. And I really wanted to say, like, maybe don't be as flirty then. But I knew that would be something she would freak out over. So instead, I said, maybe there's something we can do together to avoid these situations. And she freaked out on me anyways. She got really angry at me and said I was discounting her personal experience. In no way was I doing that. I was quite open to listening and trying to understand her personal experience. But today, an article comes out explaining Alex passing. Alec Hawaka was a Canadian game developer who's also the co-founder of independent game companies like Bitblot and Infinite Ammo. Alec was well known for collaborating with Derek Yu in creating Aquaria and a freeware, freeware, ah, freeware game called I'm OK, um, a, a deletion simulator. He worked as a lead programmer, musician, and game designer 
in the companies. He also collaborated with Scott Benson and Bethany Hockenberry to create Night in the Woods. Alec founded an independent game company called Infinite Fall. Hawaka started programming eight years from eight years of the age, I'm sorry, when his father purchased him a book. He then began working with Zephyr Productions, which is a freeware group. He then worked for several failed startups. You can see all the games. Co-founder of Night in the Woods, designer, programmer, composer of the game, passed on the 31st of August, 2019. Eileen Mary Hawaka, who is his sister, announced this via Twitter. After the revelation, she locked her account. She did not specify the cause, but suggested it was self-deletion, which we now know. All right. Now, interesting information. She now comes out to continue to cape for Zoe, which is so sick. God. Hawaka's sister explained that Alec had been battling mood and personality issues throughout his life. He also, she also referenced recent allegations of past emotional and physical bad behavior in her statement. The news of Alec's passing came just days after he was accused by Zoe Quinn. Eileen also requests people not to hate on Zoe. She also revealed how Alec himself wished the best for everyone else and Zoe. She pleads people not use his passing as an excuse to be mean to people. Eileen explained how Alec was a victim. He had spent his life battling mood and personality issues. She also said he always supported survivors and those suffering from mental problems and other chronic illnesses. She said that he is responsible for causing harm, but the person who wanted to offer people care and kindness deep inside. Alec went to various therapy and had several various medications over the last year. As a result, he became a new person without any of the darkness. Eileen also explained how he had become positive and loving, calm and happy. He was working towards rehabilitation and a better life. Until Zoe. This is big. Because everyone painted him as a guy on the edge. When his sister says, quite the opposite now. No, he was good. His progress was slow. It wasn't perfect. Um, and Manitoba Crisis Services supported Alec in the last few days. Yikes. So now we know. He was working on himself. He was in a good place. Until... Somebody needed some retweets. I mean, again, I'm just saying if something happens that you need to report, then please do so. And I will support you. If the first thing you do is tweet about it years later, I don't care what you have to say. You will never convince me that you are looking for anything but clout. And that, in my opinion, is exactly what Miss Quinn did. The indie video game world is a den of creeps. There is no doubt about this. It comes from social weirdos uh, in-grouping and continuing to hire their own weirdo friends. I wouldn't wish indie game development on my worst enemy. Um, the video games in of, of themselves, the entertainment industry, seems to be a snake pit of some of the worst people. You have no normal people at all. You just have people who take advantage of others and those who are taken advantage of and then do that, use that for profit. And this endless cycle. It's such a bizarre world that I'm so glad I'm not a part of. But Tiger King is a good documentary that is also about Zoe Quinn, I guess. I don't know. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.